Ansbach's most famous resident is still a mystery to this day, because where he came from is still unknown. His name, Kaspar Hauser, a German youth who became one of 19th century's most celebrated enigmas. The teenage boy who appeared from nowhere, staggering through the streets of Nuremberg, Germany, on Whit Monday, 1828, acted as if he was injured or drunk. He walked unsteadily up to a complete stranger, a local cobbler, and gave him a letter addressed to the captain of the 6th Cavalry Regiment, then stationed in the city and mumbled repeatedly, I want to be a soldier like my father was. The cobbler helped the boy to walk with difficulty to the police station where the lad waited until the cavalry officer was summoned. At the police station, the letter was opened and the senior police officer and the cavalryman read the poignant and bitter message. The letter explained, I send you a boy who is anxious to serve his king in the army. He was slept at my house on October 7, 1812 and I am only a poor laborer. I have ten children of my own to bring up. I have not let him outside since 1812. With cruel indifference, the letter added, If you do not want to keep him, kill him or hang him up a chimney. The letter was unsigned and the police and the army officer sadly assumed that the 16-year-old boy, abandoned as a baby, was still unwanted. The scrawled message seemed to explain his peculiar behavior, unable to walk properly on feet, as soft as a baby and with an infant vocabulary of only a few words. But the lad could write his own name in a firm, legible hand, Kaspar Hauser. The jailer in Nuremberg was fascinated by the boy and kept him in a room in his own quarters where he could watch him through a secret opening. It took him only a few days of careful observation before he decided that Kaspar was neither a born idiot nor a madman. With loving patience, the jailer using sign language taught Kaspar to talk, noting how quickly and eagerly the boy began to learn new skills. Within six weeks, the burgomaster of Nuremberg had been summoned to the jail to hear the first halting details from Kaspar of his wretched life. All Kaspar could remember was being kept in a small cell, about 6 feet long, 4 feet wide, and 5 feet high. The shutters on the window of the cell were kept permanently closed and he slept in the threadbare clothes on a bed of straw. He saw nobody and heard virtually nothing all the years he was there. Living on a diet of bread and water he found in the cell when he awoke each day. Sometimes he revealed the water tasted bitter and made him fall asleep. Every time this happened, he woke up to find his hair had been cut and his nails streamed. After years of isolation, Caspar recalled a hand reached into his cell from behind and gave him a sheet of paper and a pen. The hand guided him each day until he could write his name and repeat the phrase, I want to be a soldier. One morning, his cell was unlocked and he was taken out into the street, into the daylight and the company of other people for the first time in his life. It was the first time too that he wore shoes. In the confusion of unfamiliar sights and sounds, Caspar remembered nothing until he found himself in Nuremberg with a letter in his hand. The boy's story touched the burgomaster and the people of Nuremberg, and soon young Caspar was adopted by Professor Daumer, who began the task of educating the teenager into the ways of the world around him. In a few months, Caspar was transformed from a stumbling retarded child 
to a bright, intelligent young man. With his mysterious background creating a buzz of excitement in his new hometown, he became a much sought after guest in the homes of curious philosophers and wealthy intellectuals. And Nuremberg society soon began to remark on Caspar's startling physical resemblance to the members of the families of the Grand Dukes of Baden, the rulers of the province. Rumors abounded the most popular being that Caspar was a noble bird, and his childhood isolation had been heartlessly planned to prevent him succeeding to power as a Baden prince. At the time of Caspar's birth, two of the princes of the Baden family in the direct line of succession had died in mysterious circumstances. The people of Nuremberg were convinced that Caspar Hauser was an unwanted son of the royal family, born to the Grand Duke Karl and his wife, the Grand Duchess Stephanie. The Grand Duchess Stephanie had indeed given birth to a child 16 years earlier, but she never saw the baby. Scheming palace doctors had told her that her baby had died soon after birth of cerebral meningitis, a diagnosis confirmed by post-mortem examination. And when the Grand Duke Karl became seriously ill in 1829, he had no son and heir to succeed him. Caspar by that time had been in Nuremberg for a year, living with Professor Daumer and growing in reputation as a personable, intelligent young man of distinct ability and culture. As the Grand Duke's health failed on October 1829, Caspar's already bitterly unhappy young life was almost ended. He was attacked and stabbed by a masked assailant in the basement of Professor Daumer's house, but he survived his wounds. Alarmed officials called for a police escort and transferred Caspar to the care of Johann Biberbach, a municipality authority. The following year, the Grand Duke died and the royal succession passed to another line of the family, the sons of the Countess of Hochberg. A few months later, an eccentric English nobleman, said by many to be a friend of the Hochberg family, appeared in Nuremberg to petition the courts to become Caspar's guardian in place of his previous one. Philip, the fourth Earl of Stanhope, won his courtly in spite of local opposition. And so, out of public sight, another period of isolation began for the wretched Caspar. He was taken away from his newfound friends in Nuremberg on Lord Stanhope's orders and lodged with a surly Protestant pastor in the town of Ansbach, 20 miles away. With Caspar safely out of the way, Lord Stanhope lost interest in his new foster son, leaving him to his miserable existence with Pastor Mayer. On December 11, 1833, Caspar, then 21 years old and working as an apprentice bookbinder, was returning to his dismal lodgings through a park when he was stopped by a stranger. The man asked his name and when Caspar replied, he stabbed him repeatedly. So we're right here at the near the assassination site of uh, Casper Hauser. As you can see, there's this inscription in it which said, Unknown killed by unknown. Badly wounded, Casper staggered back to Pastor Mayer's home, but the preacher never informed the police, cruelly taunting Caspar that he had inflicted the wounds himself to get attention. Three days later, Caspar Hauser died in agony. Hearing of his death, the Grand Duchess Stephanie was reported to have broken down and wept, sobbing that she believed the young man had really been the son she was told had died in infancy. 
but none of his friends or the German courts could ever prove the background of the boy with no history and no future. They could never solve the riddle of who had locked him away for the first 16 years of his hopeless life or who the mysterious assassins were who finally succeeded in killing him. Hauser was buried in the Stadtfriedhof in Ansbach where his headstone reads in Latin. Here lies Kaspar Hauser, riddle of his time, his birth was unknown, his death mysterious, 1833. There were several doubters of Hauser, calling him a fraud and a fake. A monument to him was later erected in the court garden, which reads, Here lies a mysterious one who was killed in a mysterious manner. Today, the traces of Kaspar Hauser remain all over Ansbach, including at the Mark Grafen Museum in Kaspar Hauser Platz, a square name for him, where the bloodstained clothes he was found in, the two letters, and some of his personal belongings are exhibited. In 1981, the Kasper Hauser Monument was erected with two statues in Platenstrasse. One of Kaspar as he appeared in 1828, stooped over, legs bent oddly, the letter grasped in his hand. The other shows Kaspar as a refined young gentleman, much as he would have looked when he died from a knife wound in 1833. As years pass by, Kasper Hauser have successfully captured the imagination of the people. There were written works written about him from poems, plays, and books. He was also a subject through music, film, and television, and one of the most famous adaptations of his life was the 1974 German film The Enigma of Kaspar Hauser. Despite DNA tests and numerous books and studies, Kaspar Hauser's real origins remains an enigma. The House of Baden does not allow any medical examination of the remains of the Grand Duchess Stephanie or of the child that was buried as her son in the family boat. It is probable that no definite conclusion will ever be made on his strange life. we come at the end of the tour of Casper Hauser. I hope you guys enjoy and learn a lot of things about him. Until next time, bye! So guys, if you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel and feel free to comment. Hit the bell, hit the bell, hit the bell, hit the bell, come on guys, hit the bell! For notifications! And don't forget to share! Hello! <laughs>